Hello, everybody. My name is Brigitte Krenn. I'm a researcher and deputy director at the Austrian Research Institute for Artificial Intelligence. Um, I've been working for decades in natural language processing and in interaction, communication interaction, uh, and uh, human studying human human interaction, um, and also human robot interaction and trying to derive insights from human human interaction for modeling human robot interaction. So we human cannot not communicate. This is a major aspect of us uh, because we have been trained from uh, our first second in life uh, to be a social agent, to socially communicate. And uh, this means uh, that we have a hard time to not interpret other agents' moves as communicative signals. And robots are other agents. So these are systems that have a seemingly uh, autonomous life. Um, when we look at communication and the means of communication, and the means of human communication, we have language and speech. Uh, with the speech, when we look at speech, uh, there is also uh, this uh, non-verbal aspect, uh, like, so what we have in the speech signal, like, is it a female speaking? Is it a male speaking? You can even hear, uh, more or less how big the body is, whether the person is a heavy smoker, uh, things like that. And uh, we, we hear a lot, uh, get a lot of information from speech about the person who's speechy, speaking and also uh, in the prosody of the speech. Um, so how the intonation is, how the uh, speech uh, contour sounds. Um, Another aspect uh, in communication is facial expression. We see when we look into the faces of other people, how they feel or have an idea. And if uh, communication, so many years ago when we started to, to work on virtual agents, uh, the first virtual agents, they didn't have any uh, emotional expression. And it was really creepy uh, when interacting with these uh, agents, which were uh, talking and had uh, lip synchronization. Uh, so uh, we, we saw the lips moving, uh, but there wasn't much of a, a emotional display in the face. And this, this was really disturbing. Um, so it became clear quite, quite soon uh, that facial expression is something uh, which people are uh, looking at. And if we have human-like uh, artificial agents, uh, facial expression tells us a lot, or we try to interpret in something uh, according to facial expression, angry, disgust, fear, happiness, uh, uh, sadness, surprise, is somebody uh, in a neutral state. Um, another important aspect are gestures. The gesturing, what we do with our hands, with our arms, uh, for instance, when we point at something, pointing really uh, tells us or, or the, the other that uh, the other might uh, want to direct uh, his or her attention um, to where the person is pointing at. Uh, it's also body orientation. It makes a difference whether we face each other or we are uh, turning our back to somebody. Um, also, the proximity uh, tells us uh, something. So, uh, the closer we, we stand to each other, the more intimate is the relationship. Uh, this also, and, and, and we react to that. Um, well, and we react to that not just uh, consciously, but uh, we uh, react to uh, these uh, signals uh, of our communication partners um, or other agents in 
uh, a subliminal way. And uh, so that's uh, bringing us also back to this, we humans cannot not communicate. Uh, just as a experiment of uh, self-experiments, if you uh, look at, the, in, at these pictures, uh, so communication always involves the interpretation of the other. Uh, so maybe this is a laughing camel or a grumpy cat, or we see a sad dog. Um, maybe we see an astonished pepper robot or a determined uh, peer too, uh, because of kind of uh, uh, its posture with the arms of the, uh, wide away from, from the body. Uh, we might see a desperate robot because of a uh, desperate Romeo robot because of the uh, body posture, basically. Uh, and we might see an interesting UR10, which is a, an industrial robot arm, um, because the end effect uh, really faces the, the spectator or the onlooker. So, what we so we again we have facial expression um, and we have body postures in these examples. Uh, here is another example. This is uh, from an art exhibition. Uh, it's called The Birth of the Robots uh, by a French artist. And what she did is she put two of these uh, humanoid robots uh, opposite of each other and uh, film the robots move. And when we look at it, it's quite likely that we have the impression that those two agents uh, sort of interact. Uh, technically, it, it's just sufficient that you put two agents that don't even realize that there is another, they, they have no perception, they just move. Uh, opposite to each other, but we, when you look at it as spectators, we interpret it in a social way. Uh, we, we are very likely to do this. And when we model human robot interaction or robot behavior, we have to be aware of this and we have to keep this in mind. Um, now, and in the following of the talk, I will address uh, a few, as I give you a few examples from research projects, uh, we did the um, and address uh, several aspects of communication, like gesturing, uh, orientation, uh, gaze direction, posture, proximity. So when when you look at the uh, picture from the Rally project, uh, we have the pepper robot, which is seemingly looking at this object uh, and pointing at it or uh, indicating uh, want to have it. Uh, it's not so clear for us. The, the, the idea was that the, the robot should point, uh, which is um, for this uh, robot really hard to realize because of the uh, degrees of freedom of the joints. Uh, and so, uh, there is a discrepancy between what we as humans, what body signals, uh, uh, bodily behaviors we as humans can produce, and what uh, the uh, a, a particular robot with a very specific body and very specific degrees of freedom in the joints can produce, and how easy or hard it is then for us humans to understand or interpret what the gesture of the robot might uh, mean. Um, also in, in, in the next uh, picture, which is also from the Rowley project, which is about robot learning uh, labels for, wor for, for objects, so word, word learning and, and action learning. So um, the robot seemingly looks at the object. But at least this is what we as humans read from the posture of the robot and the eye gaze, where the, the gaze of the, the robot is directed to. Um, 
The next example, so the next picture is uh, from the project Probook Studio, uh, which is a, a project which is researching human um, robot interaction with collaborative robots, uh, with industrial robots. Uh, and what we, so this, this was at Ars Electronica uh, 2020, uh, where we did a small experiment. Uh, so we had this industrial robot, um, which is uh, from UNAM Robotics, which is a project partner um, in this uh, studio project. And so we have this mobile platform, which is an industrial mobile platform, and we have this uh, industrial robot arm, the UR10. And uh, from psychology, uh, we know, and also from let's say, uh, experience from our own experience, you know, that um, they're, they're, when people come closer to us, if they get too close, we move uh, a bit further, so we, we, we back off. Uh, and so uh, basically, you really can, can uh, play with other people. So that's what you learn in the first semester of, uh, the, of psychology. Uh, if you, so you get closer, the other one, kind of gets back a bit you follow the other one gets back a bit so you really can uh, drive people around the room like this and so we took uh, this uh, coming close the giving way um, for, for this small experiment so the robot um, the, basically the robot arm was either moving forward uh, when the person leaned back and when the person came closer, the robot arm was, was moving backwards. Uh, and we explained to the people, so the, the visitors at, at Ars Electronica, what to do. And uh, showed them the small game. And that, and that, that, that this is it, this is, you can play with the robot. And uh, when you get closer, the robot arm will move back. And when you uh, give way, the uh, robot arm will move forward. And uh, and then we were interested uh, what people actually are doing, so lay people. And uh, what we found, people really, really were kind of uh, trying to find out uh, where are the centers of the robot? Uh, where do, do they need to wiggle around so that the robot is following them? Things like that. They came super, super close, uh, dangerously close. Um, in, for for a for an industrial uh, robot arm to be close to, um, and yeah, uh, and and this was the, the the interesting bit for us really was to see what is the behavior of humans and how do they try to probe uh, the robot or do do they uh, simply adhere to what they uh, are told to do with these uh, robotic agents. Um, and then in, in this example, you see um, orientation so in, and proximity. Imagine uh, you're standing and a robot is silently approaching behind of you, very close. So this is a situation if you are not aware of the robot and you might then realize that it's there, uh, th th that's a, so, so you might be a bit uh, uneasy or even shocked. Uh, and even if you know that there's a robot standing behind you, uh, you might feel uneasy if it's not kind of a, a robot you already know and you, you know the behavior uh, of the robot, uh, so you would feel safe. Mm. And for the interaction with uh, an artificial system, like a robot, which, which is also uh, physically in, in the same, sh sharing the same space with you, uh, you had to uh, kind of collaborate that in, in industrial context, collaborate with the system. Uh, there is this major challenge after interplay between perception, interpretation and action. So when we communicate with each other, somebody sets, a, the, the one sets an action. Uh, this action is perceived by the other one and interpreted according to whatever signals come in this action and according to the context this action takes place. And uh, then an action is set. 
And so this goes back and forth between the communication or interaction partners. And uh, this has also a very uh, subtle timing. And when the timing doesn't work, uh, we get desynchronized and uh, don't really understand what's going on. And in order for uh, an artificial system, uh, so here we have this robot dog, which is giving the paw like a, kind of a, another, a, an animal dog uh, would do it. Uh, so for the, for, for the interaction uh, to function in, in a larger context, um, the robot would need to have enough perception mechanisms to understand that the human is doing the same and uh, that there is this uh, action of uh, giving the pull. Um, if, if not, uh, this would just a, a signal from the robot, uh, but uh, without context, basically. And that doesn't, this is not really uh, part of a, a, an interactive behavior, right? Um, here we have, uh, again, from, from the Riley project, this example with Pepper uh, looking at the objects at the table. And here for us humans, it really looks as if Pepper were kind of sort of scratching its head and, and thinking. Uh, this might be because we have implemented it like this, so that when the system is processing, it's thinking. Uh, it might be by chance. During a longer interaction, the human would find out. So if it's just by chance, the human would get uh, kind of um, uneasy with it or wouldn't understand and then think, okay, this is random behavior. Um, if it's uh, implemented on purpose, um, the human would understand, okay, this is something like the system is processing now. Uh, same thing or another example here, we have uh, the looks like the Asimo robot um, presenting the motorcycle to a person. Uh, so this looks like a very well functioning interaction. So there is this robot presenting uh, the motorcycle to the person standing next to the robot. Uh, this only, in, in this way, it only would work. Uh, if the robot really had a perception and uh, there is a person, the person is looking at the robot, the person is basically following uh, the robot's gesture. Uh, if the robot doesn't have enough uh, perception capabilities and not an interpretation uh, mechanism for uh, what, what it perceives, uh, that would just be a robot pointing at the motorcycle. Uh, without any uh, interaction, basically. The person would read it as an interaction, maybe. But if the robot is just still standing there for the whole time and just pointing at the motorcycle, the person would realize, okay, this is no interaction. This is just a robot pointing at the motorcycle. So uh, I've already talked um, a lot about perception. Uh, here are some examples of uh, perception devices. So we need various sensor systems. Uh, the data which come from these sensor systems need to be synchronized. And then this uh, data need to be interpreted according to a certain uh, situation, a certain context. Uh, so depending on the projects and what we are interested in, we use uh, different uh, types of uh, sensors. So the OptiTrack system is an example for a rather, um, yeah, um, yeah, system which you which you really need to have in a in a kind of laboratory situation uh, where there is a, a whole array of uh, cameras and the person is uh, wearing a track suit with all these markers, you see the uh, white dots. Uh, and when the person moves, the system tracks the uh, movements of the person. So this is a, a high cost uh, setting of a sensor system. Um, 
we use this type of, of sensor system in, in um, data collection experiment where, where we were interested in um, a combination of um, task-oriented verbal expressions and arm movement. So the, the person, uh, that there was a table with objects on it, and the person was just moving one object, uh, grabbing an object, putting it somewhere else, and uh, speaking uh, what uh, they are doing. Like I uh, take uh, the box and put it next to the uh, Pringles package or something like that, or I move uh, the bottle uh, to the left corner of the table and do this. Um, this was a data set uh, which we're co we were collecting uh, to see um, or, or to have material to experiment or, or to look into uh, whether there is a correlation between what people say, where people look at. So you see here the uh, eye tracking glasses uh, and, uh, and, and the uh, syntactic structure of the uh, utterances as there are theories um, which uh, say or, or stipulate that there is a connection, the structuring of natural language utterances uh, is related to motor processes. Um, another more simpler example, uh, so with the simpler, uh, much, much more simpler sensor system uh, is uh, here we, we, we use here in, in, with the project uh, Dancer, which is uh, an ongoing project where we use uh, a Kinect sensor uh, to um, track the human, a human dancer, and then uh, the system, um, so, so that the, the movement of the uh, human dancer are then transferred to the pepper robot, and the pepper robot is doing basically the same. Uh, movements uh, uh, as a dancer does, uh, of course, in, in the possible range of the robot. Um, that uh, this can be done, uh, this, this system uh, in, in this example just uses one uh, sensor, which is a sort of off the shelf uh, sensor from, uh, yeah, you can, you can buy in, uh, in, in the shop. Um, and what, what you see here is an example from uh, Kobut Studio, from, from this project, where uh, we have, uh, we, we work with the virtual uh, reality and mixed reality. And what you see here is the, the, uh, yeah, the, the virtual um, reality glasses and the, uh, trackers and uh, down here on, on the left side you see an, an example of the virtual scenario and here the, a, a high level um, picture of uh, the components which have to work together uh, and in, in the mixed reality setting the, the robot is not a virtual robot but a real robot so the one you, you saw uh, earlier in this uh, Ex experiment uh, at uh, Art Electronica with this uh, I move forward, uh, you lean backward, you move forward, I lean backward. Here again in this uh, proxemics game. Uh, and um, because we had uh, an industrial robot uh, very close to people, this was a visit of our scenario. That means uh, it was the robot was not autonomously uh, acting, but there was uh, a human uh, to with a joystick uh, to operate the, ro uh, the robot. This means in, in, in this context, uh, from technically speaking, there was no perception uh, from the robot. So the only perception was reacting to the uh, joystick, which is not really a perception in, in the sense of. Uh, what, how, how we use it in, in the same, within uh, interaction communication. Um, but uh, we did it with this, in, in this Wizard of Oz scenario because we wanted to make sure that uh, 
we uh, were not obliged uh, to uh, have this uh, distance between uh, robot and human, which is uh, important uh, for safety when one works with an industrial robot. And in this case, uh, we really could allow people to, to get uh, super, super close uh, to the robot. Uh, and the interesting thing for us, uh, well, then we made video recordings and, and to see uh, how this robot, uh, human robot encounters uh, took place and, and did manual analysis of the, of the recordings. And, and what we found is uh, just repeating what already uh, said that people were much more interested in, in exploring the robot's action and perception capabilities than reproducing the game. And this being very, very close, going to an intimate distance uh, to the robot. And also another very interesting aspect was that some of the bystanders really were trying out variants of the participants' behaviors, of, of, of those uh, behaviors of people who were uh, currently interacting uh, with the robot. Uh, so it really looks uh, or looked at if those people were doing a dry run uh, and simulating or doing the same behavior with a bit of uh, variations, maybe uh, as they thought, that would be a, a, good, a good way to interact. Uh, with the with the pepper robot, um, we we uh, in in the Rally project we were interested in multimodal word learning. So the task was that from situations, so several situations, the uh, robot was exposed to, uh, the robot should learn the names of objects and. Uh, the names of actions. So basically, uh, learn uh, nouns and verbs. Uh, and this, uh, in the perception, we had object tracking, uh, we had speech recognition, and then, of course, we had to synchronize the speech and the vision. Uh, and uh, here on, on the right, you see um, a high level uh, architecture. So there were these camera images going to the object tracker uh, in order to uh, identify the actions uh, and the objects uh, related uh, so being used. Uh, and there was the recorded speech um, and the segmentation of the speech and through the alignment of uh, objects and uh, the actions down with the object basically where they were moved to. Um, and, and the segmented speech uh, appearing in different contexts, uh, the, the system was learning uh, labels for nouns, so for, for objects and, and, and for, for actions. So. And uh, in an extended uh, version, we were testing out transparency mechanism. So from um, early infant learning uh, and infant behavior, uh, research on, on infant behavior, we know that infants have, uh, so really young infants already have kind of a, 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 an idea of what uh, information they are missing and they are kind of asking for information and input either by pointing or by making sounds like ooh, ah, uh, or, or combine, combining of these uh, signals so that the adults, uh, the communication, the adult communication partners react to it. And we wanted to uh, try out the same with robots um, and uh, had two, two variants. So one variant was, where uh, the the robot, when the robot was not, so, so that the probability of the uh, combination of object and label, so, uh, word learned or action and, and label, uh, verb learned, uh, was not, uh, was below a certain threshold, the robot actively 
uh, was asking for more input uh, and was pointing at the object uh, and making kind of uh, sounds. Uh, so that the human, so the idea was that the human then uh, repeats the name uh, of the object or uh, repeats the action. And as another uh, condition, we just visualized on, on the Pepper's tablet um, how the lexicon looked like with the probabilities and uh, so that the human just could look at the, uh, yeah, at the computer screen and, and, and see a list of uh, the words which are not, uh, yeah, word object uh, combinations which have a relatively a low probability. And uh, then we were interested in what, uh, how people uh, reacted. And also uh, in, in a questionnaire, uh, we asked for what the, the uh, impression of, of the people, uh, whether they had the impression that the robot, so that they managed the uh, uh, that the robot was learning something, that the robot was uh, learning kind of uh, good enough, things like that. And, and we also had the, the actual uh, learning rate. And uh, a very interesting finding uh, in terms of interaction communication or understanding interaction communication was that uh, the robot uh, in this uh, making gestures gestures so or pointing at objects, um, in this condition, the human interaction with the robot increased. So they used more words, they used more meta information, um, they talked more to the robot, uh, which is uh, a problem uh, because the robot at the other side was not prepared. So, so the, the system was not implemented for all these uh, meta talk. Uh, the, the system was just implemented for getting input where uh, the utterance uh, is related to the action and to the object. So um, again, this is important uh, because uh, having robots which show more uh, communicative behavior leads to humans which show more communicative behavior. And if at the robot side and at the robot implementation side, this increased human communicative behavior cannot be interpreted, it might deteriorate. Uh, the outcome of the learning task. Another example is uh, from the uh, Cobot Studio. Um, here you see uh, three different um, yeah, game examples. Uh, we had this, uh, what we call game one in the project. Uh, where we were from, 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 from our interaction communication uh, perspective, uh, interested very much in a um, context or a situation where the robot was uh, packing. Um, so the robot and, and the human were standing uh, opposite to each other. Uh, and uh, between them was a conveyor belt and on the conveyor belt, there were coming small packs of um, rubber duck uh, puzzles uh, containing rubber ducks and they the robot had to put or the robot and the human together had to to pack those uh, parcels in a cardboard box a bigger cardboard box and at some point the robot stopped and uh, the the human only had the um, information that uh, the uh, they should uh, observe the robot and uh, support the robot when needed. And uh, so we were interested in does the human, so we had two conditions again. So the uh, 
actually three conditions the uh, robot to stop and and that was it so kind of stopped uh, above the parcel um, and what you see in in this in this example here so the 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 red circle this uh, tells you from the human perspective where the human is looking at and this uh, yellow dot just indicates the head of the human from another perspective in, in, in the game. And, and this is a controller uh, with which the, the human could kind of grab the parcel. Um, and we, we were interested what happens and how do people react when the robot just stops or when the robot stops and we have uh, light animation uh, on the gripper, kind of arrows pointing down, uh, or the robot arm is pointing at the parcel and then at the human uh, as a signal to tell the human, okay, uh, now it's your turn. You should put uh, the, um, the parcel into the box. In, the, in, in, in this example, uh, there is um, a robot and a human uh, who need to um, collect. In, in this case, it's, it's LJ. And um, the human can, everybody's kind of uh, trying to find uh, LJ and the hum human and the robot, both of them. And there are blue ones only the human can take, and there are red ones only the robot can take. And depending on who finds uh, an, an, an alder, um, the either the robot has to uh, get the attention of the human and kind of uh, direct the human to to the the alder, or the other way around. So. Uh, Again, human and robot have to interact. And uh, again, what we were interested in, uh, is it so the, the, the robot only could um, understand or um, arms raised, like attention to by the human and come here, this gesture. Um, and the robot itself, also produced uh, arms up for attention, come here or also back up for the for the human, uh, and uh, the robot could also approach the human in order to get the attention from the human. And um, so, go, going back to this uh, human robot sort of turn taking. Um, what we found out in these three different conditions that it was helpful when the robot was pointing so that the human would know what the human should do next. And mm, this is important in human-robot collaboration, not only for a smooth interaction, but also for the feeling of the human, uh, how, how, how safe the human feels in the context or in, in the collaboration with the robot or how uh, trustworthy uh, the uh, human uh, finds the robot is. Um, interestingly, we also found that when we had these light signals on the gripper, these uh, arrows, uh, light arrows pointing down, uh, the, the humans, were more likely to interpret it as uh, they should put the, the pass into the, the robot's gripper. Yeah. Uh, so from all these experiments we do, um, we learn how, which aspects of uh, communicative signals um, are helpful in which context for the human to understand. Um, in the uh, in, in this um, collaboration where the robot and the, the human um, collect 
the different alga together, uh, the focus uh, really was on uh, how do we establish mutual attention because mutual attention is important uh, because when uh, a human and a robot need to collaborate on, on a, a work piece, uh, it is important that they have, both of them have the attention to the particular object, to the particular piece, which is important uh, at the moment. And so we need it, uh, or, or we need to test which signals uh, from a robot especially here, the industrial robot with the, yeah, a particular morphology of, of the robot with a pinch grip. Uh, how, how do I, uh, does a robot kind of point at something? Because pointing is typical in human human interaction, um, an important means to establish uh, attention or joint attention. Uh, also, uh, getting closer to the other is also dragging the attention to, uh, to, to... So when I approach to you and I'm getting closer and closer, you cannot avoid realizing that I'm coming closer. So you direct your attention to me. Uh, and this also works with the robot, with when the robot coming closer. Yeah, and uh, in for us humans, it really is a simple interaction. But uh, for a human and a robot, uh, especially the, the 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 timing of this interaction, apart from uh, is the system able to perceive uh, and uh, the, the 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 human gestures. Uh, and uh, interpret them correctly, and is the uh, system able to produce gestures which can be realized by a human. Apart from that, uh, the timing, the interplay uh, of this sending a signal, interpreting, acting, uh, perceiving the signal is very important. And we humans are much faster than robots uh, in, in, in a kind of uh, collaborative uh, or, or in, in a setting together with the human. So an industrial robot can be super, super fast, much faster than a human. Uh, but uh, according to uh, safety reasons, the robot has to be slow and also according to processing reasons, yeah? because it's not a situation where the robot always knows what to do next. Uh, but the, the, the robotic system needs to uh, process all the, the, the perception data, interpret the data, and then, then. So this takes a while. And so usually in, in this type of interaction from a human point of view, the robot is super slow. And uh, it's quite likely to happen that the human loses the robot. Uh, and the human is uh, kind of interpreting already something else uh, as what the robot is, is doing at the moment uh, because the robot is so so slow. So the human sends a signal, the robot reacts, but this reaction time is more than the human would expect. Uh, and so the human does not interpret or, or, or relate it to what, to what the human did sometime before. And this is uh, an important um, aspect is delay of uh, and this often this asynchronicity. Uh, we found that in in this uh, human uh, industrial robot collaborative settings, and we also found it in these uh, um, experiments with uh, the robot learning uh, words, um, especially when when the human had to uh, or the robot was actively asking for further information uh, from the robot. Uh, yeah, this is basically uh, the bigger picture of what we are facing at the moment when we really uh, want to have uh, an autonomous system or two autonomous systems, the human 
and the artificial system, the robot, interacting. Uh, what, what, what are the, 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 the caveats we have to account for? How do we deal with this uh, asynchronicity? Uh, we, we need much more flexibility in, in the systems, kind of this uh, making sure that the other is still with me or going back and kind of getting the attention of the other again. Uh, so these are, um, are things uh, which need to be researched much more. Um, yeah, and uh, here you have just a, a list of uh, papers which uh, discuss the uh, aspects I have been uh, talking um, right now. And yeah, this is it uh, for today. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.